So we are Ultra, uh, and uh, this is our developer portal that is basically for developers and companies who are building financial apps and would like to make sure they are secure. Uh, we are the cybersecurity company that uh, specializes on uh, banking and finance. Now, we built our develop developer portal um, actually several years ago, and we are constantly improving it. And uh, the idea is that we are trying to cover a topic that is traditionally very obscure, not really open, and uh, we need to cover quite a lot of uh, aspects of it. So it's not really an API portal or portal specialized on one product. It's basically a portal that tries to showcase all the products and uh, provide uh, a little bit more various experience. So the idea is that uh, our portal is basically about uh, the products. We try to make the products very visible and very uh, well defined. Uh, what we do assume is some knowledge from our developers. Basically, it's not so easy to navigate uh, specific products for financial security if you have no experience with it. Um, if, if this is the case, you can always you know, go to our open source chat room. We can you know, help you navigate it if you are, for example, starting with financial apps. But generally speaking, most of our customers go directly to the products. And from then, I'll just uh, jump through the documentation a bit to show you how it works. We have some uh, tutorials where we try to explain basic concepts of the uh, particular product and some typical areas that our customers need to solve. And uh, then we have components, which are the building blocks of the solution. So uh, what we hear from our customers and from our partners and from everybody who sees our developer portal is that it's uh, relatively uh, flexible from the terms of a solution. They call our solution a Lego that you can build together to solve slightly different purposes. And uh, if I just uh, click through the develop developer portal a bit more, you can see that we have some, uh, I would call it, uh, news-based content, which is basically for tutorial. For the news-based content, you always have some author who wrote the content, and then you have the article, which is relatively high level. It still contains the principles of how it works, what the components are present, and so on. But it's still relatively high level. But then you can deep dive to some little bit more detailed aspect. For example, you can go to even cryptography specification if you would like to. You can jump to the documentation of the mobile SDKs, which is a little bit closer to a reference guide with all the aspects of the development, with everything that uh, the developer needs to know to work with our solutions. So we can start very high level in the beginning from the product selection through tutorials to, to the detailed documentation. And it actually, it actually works quite nicely, especially for companies that already work with our solutions. They are really able to navigate the, the developer portal quite efficiently. Now, uh, we also have this component section, which basically shows the pieces of Lego that I mentioned. These are the building blocks of all our solutions. And you can categorize them somehow. For example, something is for the backend developers, something is for the mobile developers. But what I wanted to show you is that we try to make the documentation quite uh, specific for the purpose. We always try to uh, make uh, every page fit for the particular use case. So for example, you saw already a tutorial, you saw some regular documentation. And if you now look at uh, this uh, API reference, you can see that it basically follows the typical structure of the API documentation with all the response codes and all the details that you need to build efficient uh, API uh, consumer. And uh, for example, if you are a database developer, because some of our solutions might need to uh, set up a database, we have, again, a specialized documentation for databases. Uh, it, this was actually quite a challenge because we were looking for, for some feedback on how the developers of database solutions use uh, their tools, how, how they work, how they operate. And they usually said, just give us the schema. So we made a, an executive decision, basically, that every documentation is always present with every product. We keep uh, the documentation close to the source codes. So for example, I was showing this component called PowerAuth Cloud, Cloud, which is basically our cloud deployment of uh, authentication stack, for example, for mobile token deployments. And this is the repository that you have. You have some source codes related to the project. And uh, you have also the docs folder, which is uh, uh, connected with this particular component. 
And uh, this is the API reference template that I opened. And you can see that we have some special markings in the Markdown documentation. So our developers basically write documentation in Markdown. And they are able to use some specialized comments. For example, this one says that this particular documentation is an API format. And uh, then they can use different comments. For example, this is uh, the beginning of the post slash registration endpoint. And everything that is inside this begin and and block is basically interpreted using the best guess approach. For example, this is what we take into a heading. This is the description. This is the info box. Now we have some request structure, response structure for 200 code. And this is basically what you see here in this uh, documentation. You can see it's an API format. You can see that uh, there is this uh, post create new registration endpoint with uh, slash registration uh, uh, path. And if you open it, you can see the description request and various responses, which are automatically interpreted from the documentation. So the idea is that the developer really doesn't need to waste any time. They just document the solution. They uh, need to do it because for every uh, repository, we have a code review flow where uh, you need to write the documentation to pass the code review. So it's not possible to just make changes without appropriate changes in the documentation. That's something that we uh, set up uh, from the from the let's say organizational or, pro or process perspective. And uh, if I go back to the to the high level, so so the, so the basic idea is that every repository has uh, its own documentation. So what about the tutorials then? How how do we do it? Uh, we have one specialized documentation that is used for some generic documentation, something that is across the repositories that needs to span for all the company and all the developer portal. Currently, we only have tutorials, but of course, we have some new types of documentation on the roadmap, such as technical blocks. They will be also in this uh, single repository that everybody can edit. And this is the tutorial I was showcasing, introduction to authentication in, uh, in digital banking. We have uh, documented components, and we have overall documentation. And uh, how do we build it together? We uh, essentially built all the, all the tooling required to build the developer portal. So the first thing is that uh, we are leveraging GitHub pages uh, to host our developer portal. And uh, we are automatically generating through, through the scripts uh, all the documentation. So we have some templates that are specifically designed, for example, for API template. This is what you saw earlier. This is a database template. This is a tutorial template. So we have templates for various types of documentation. And uh, we have this uh, folder called releases, where we have uh, basically metadata for all the releases and the components that we built. So for example, if I open this uh, uh, 1x, 11x documentation for the PowerOut Cloud component, we basically have this JSON file, which specifies where this component is hosted and uh, what is the branch that we should use to build it. And uh, we do this for every component and for every uh, product that we have. So for example, for product, this is a bit more structured. You have uh, multiple repositories that are part of the product. For component, the documentation file is a bit simpler. And uh, this file is actually used in a tool that we built called DocuCheck. And DocuCheck is basically the pre-processing tool for the documentation. It makes sure that all the links are valid so it does some validations of the links so that we don't have 404 pages in our documentation. And it processes all the comments that I was showing to some uh, markup that uh, Jekyll can understand. Jekyll is the technology that actually powers GitHub pages. And uh, after we run, run the script, we currently do it through Jenkins. Uh, we basically validate the documentation. We pre-process it with DocuCheck and then uh, we render it in the docs folder of this uh, uh, repository that we have currently in our our system. So this is basically the rendered finished documentation that we can push to the developer portal and make changes instantly. In our case, we don't really have these uh, typical business people who do not know anything about technology at all. Everybody at our company is uh, still somehow connected to technology, and I don't expect this would change in the upcoming three, four, five years, maybe. Maybe a little bit more about... Uh, other aspects of our developer portal. It's a static page, basically HTML. And uh, we managed to find some nice plugins, such as uh, this uh, search for Algolia. 
uh, that uh, that we basically uh, plugged into the static website, and it provided us quite uh, quite a nice uh, uh, search functionality without any uh, complicated coding. Uh, we also have some uh, nice add-ons uh, to to the page, such as uh, such as the ability to uh, Im immediately submit issue or immediately connect to Jira for for our our uh, support or to go through the uh, chat with our engineers. And uh, uh, finally, we have some nice editing options where basically if you, if you uh, find a mistake in the documentation, you can either jump right to the GitHub page that is representing the documentation and you can send, up, send us a pull request or you can send us feedback, which basically means open an issue on the documentation. We keep track of all the uh, important information that can help us uh, identify the source of the feedback. And of course, uh, uh, you can uh, find all the source codes of the solutions on the GitHub, so you can, you can just go directly there. I think that uh, one of the less visible aspects is that we tested all the developer portal through the accessibility tools, meaning that uh, all the fonts and colors and uh, font sizes are designed to uh, uh, fit even people with some uh, seeing disability, disabilities and uh, other handicaps that can uh, prevent them from using the developer portal efficiently, uh, which is actually quite important for us. I think that uh, the big idea of our developer portal that uh, maybe I can use it to wrap up is that uh, currently uh, we see our solution uh, of the developer portal as a platform that we are able to extend and we can build on top of it quite quickly, uh, introduce new types of documentation and new types of content, new plugins. And uh, this is something that uh, we are committed to invest in into uh, because we see this uh, open documentation is one of our big competitive advantages over companies that are traditionally closed sourced and it's really difficult to get to the products. So uh, this is everything for me. I would uh, thank you for your attention and uh, of course, I'm looking forward to your questions, comments. You can connect to us at Twitter uh, and uh, follow our company on LinkedIn. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> so here I was trying to be smart, answering what do you use for the parser, but you answered it in the meanwhile properly in the chat. Um, yep, yep. Another yep. question uh, came up. Um, so how many people are uh, behind this portal and who's writing the docs? Mm -hmm. That's actually interesting. Uh, we are still a fairly small company, so we are a team of uh, basically uh, approximately 10 people. Uh, the developer portal uh, is uh, is a result of work of three people, basically, so not, not too many. But of course, the content is a teamwork. Everybody publishes documentation to our developer portal. Of course, not everybody publishes the same type of documentation, but uh, every developer is responsible for making a proper documentation for their components. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, architects are responsible for writing these tutorials and posts and a uh, little bit high level documents. Uh, but uh, I think that the important part is that we actually managed to do it quite efficiently because of the infrastructure we are using. GitHub provides us uh, hosting for free. Uh, Jekyll is for free. Everything is basically something that we can use as open source. And uh, as a result, a team of you know seven engineers basically and uh, three engineers focused on the developer portal can build quite a large documentation. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you still perceive as a bottleneck in this publishing process? Uh, well, I, I think that the reference part of the documentation is something that works quite well because uh, the documentation is part of every single pull request. So when we write new code, we also publish new documentation of the new code and new component. Uh, the more complicated topic is uh, this uh, tutorial part where you need some overview of the system and you always need to come up with some new topic, new subjects, new views that uh, you are using for basically uh, explaining your products. And uh, this, of course, requires a little bit more creative capacities, which uh, which is, I think, the biggest limitation, uh, creative capacities and uh, maybe uh, hands basically or the time that uh, that we could use to, uh, you know, allocate for writing. Yeah, time, time. Yep. The most important resource in the universe. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And uh, maybe if I could use this opportunity, we are, of course, looking for a technical writer. So if you have uh, some, you know, skills and you understand cybersecurity, then definitely just uh, I will be happy to uh, receive some comment from you or uh, maybe a message on LinkedIn. <laughs> Can you tell us about your roadmap 
is there new ways um, you're uh, going to install for, for conveying information? Yes, I think that, you know, we actually did something really different with our developer portal because we are building uh, solutions that are traditionally obscure, not very well documented, uh, mostly closed sourced. Mm -hmm. And just by opening up the documentation, we actually made quite a big change uh, that uh, we try to make this a little bit less obscured. And if we are continuing this trend, we also need uh, better ways uh, for our customers or prospects to try the software somehow. So we are trying to build sandboxes and some uh, testing utilities and testing tools that are not really full scope of the solution, but uh, provide clear overview of uh, how the solutions work and uh, what is the typical use case. Uh, this is something that we currently saw during the first POC project with the customer, and we would like to make it a little bit more streamlined so that the delivery is uh, easier. Even though we are still lacking some capabilities here, even opening the documentation actually helps quite a lot. Uh, we are a company in the Czech Republic and suddenly we are receiving uh, requests from uh, Brazil or the United States or Indonesia from basically all around the world, just because we decided not to be closed sourced. We decided mm -hmm. to make everything comprehensive, well-documented, and even with uh, the, the, the software itself, we try to be open as mm -hmm. much as possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.